Hello, welcome to PC Mag Live. We've got a great show for you today. I'm Dan Costa. He is Matthew Murray, and we are in PC Mag's New York Labs. We're going to run down the top news of the day. We're going to pull one cool thing off the shelf from the labs to show you, and then we're going to answer some of your reader questions. Let's get right into the news story. The biggest news headline I saw today was that Bill Gates is rumored to return as the CEO of Microsoft. He stepped down in 2000, was replaced by Steve Ballmer, as many people know. Since then, he's been working hard on the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. But according to Bloomberg, he is one of the front runners to become the next, the former and next CEO of, of, uh, of Microsoft. Matt, I, 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 I see the story. I understand the appeal. I don't see how this possibly happens. Yeah, I, it seems pretty unlikely to me, too. But uh, as we were talking about our morning meeting today, uh, it's possible that a lot of people want to see another Steve Jobs kind of thing happen with Bill Gates because he and Steve Jobs were competitors you know, in the public mind for a long time as far as um, the big personalities behind these big companies. And Steve Ballmer, for his virtues, did not have that same kind of big oversized personality. Well, he's got a big personality, he but, does, not, but not, not necessarily a visionary, yeah, a techno exactly. technology visionary. And obviously Microsoft has been having a lot of challenges lately uh, as they're trying to move into the mobile space, uh, changing windows and other things like that. So they need someone with vision. And say what you will about Bill Gates, he's still one of the few people out there that has more vision than pretty much anybody. He's got vision to spare, but I don't. I just don't see how he solves Microsoft's current problems. I don't think you go back to the. I don't think you go to the past to to bring this company into the future. They've got great assets. He certainly helped found it. He helped uh, create those assets. But I I think they need somebody that's thinking more mobile, more social, more media, and just uh, I think that I think Microsoft needs something other than Bill Gates right now. That's that's possible. One rumor that I heard floated around a while back, I think around here, was that they would get someone from Nokia after they bought the device business. Yeah. Stephen and, Elop might be the. Uh, yeah, I mean, exactly. He's another and and that would make sense, especially considering Microsoft is really making the convergence play right now with the PC, the tablet, uh, the phone, and all that. So something like that would make sense. But still, obviously, Bill Gates has enormous name recognition, has uh, undoubtedly lots of ideas, and has got really good street cred and social cred from his uh, charitable work. Yeah. So, I mean, there are so. a lot of good reasons to still want him at the forefront of the company. Even so, I'm just going to go on record and say, not going to happen. Just write it out. It's a great I, headline for today, not going to happen. I, I'm actually with you on this, yeah. but uh, anything, anything can happen. Anything can happen. In fact, our next story, the Microsoft Surface, Surface 2s have, are close to selling out. They haven't even started shipping yet, but reports are that the devices are in such short supply that they are selling out. Um, the problem with this story is that nobody knows exactly how many Surface Pro 2s were made. <laughs> Therefore, we don't know whether they're selling out of 100 units, 1,000 units, or a million units. I don't think it's a million units. But um, it's interesting that there is this pent-up demand for the Surface Pro and the Surface RT. Uh, Matt, you've played with both devices. Uh, you've got opinions about them. Well, I think part of the, the problem with the Surface is still uh, trying to conceive of Microsoft as as a hardware company in that way. Obviously, they've put out other types of hardware over the years, but they're still trying to sort of edge their way into the actual computer market. And the, the Surface RT did not get a lot of really great reviews. The first time Certainly I it, not by us. No, absolutely. And the, the real Surface did better, and certainly more people got excited by the new Surfaces that they announced a little while back. But still, it's, um, it's an uphill climb for Microsoft. If you can get a Surface Pro to last for eight hours, then I think that is a completely viable replacement not only for your laptop but also for your iPad and I think that's the magic price the magic point where all of a sudden that product takes off yeah absolutely and again that sort of goes back to to what we were saying a while ago with Microsoft's play for mobile is they want to be what you think of when you think of whatever device you're carrying around. Obviously, the Surface isn't going to quite <laughs> replace a phone yet. I mean, if they come up with a smaller one, and there's some rumors going around about Microsoft coming out with a Surface Mini, which yeah. might be you know, kind of more like a phablet, depending think, on listen, how they, far they go down. They've got to do it. They've got to do it. They've already got the phone. They've got Windows Phone on the, on the handheld form factor. They've got the Surface Tablet uh, at sort of the, uh, the large-scale iPad size. They've, I think they've got to come out with a Note, a Windows-based, like Galaxy Note-sized uh, device would be kind of fantastic. They could even call it the Microsoft One Note they and could tie in with the Note software. It's only they one name. They just keep using it, just like Windows. They just <laughs> use the same name for all their products. <laughs> well, certainly Apple has, has done some of that too, so there's a little bit of precedent for it. But 
Uh, yeah, it, I mean, it'll be, it'll be really interesting to see what happens. Uh, the, surf, the new surfaces certainly have good potential. Uh, we haven't gotten them in the labs yet, so we haven't tested them. So they might not be all that. But if they can sell out without getting a PC Mag review, why send them to us? That's a scary point, but I, but I guess it's a good one. Still, we're hoping to, to get a chance to see them and see how well they work. Also in the news today, the Nobel Prizes are being awarded, and the Higgs boson discoverers have won an award. It's Peter Higgs from Britain and Francois Englert from France. Um, they have discovered, they're getting their, the prize for discovering the Higgs boson. Matt, we talked about this this morning. You've had at least 20 minutes for repair. <laughs> so you are now going to explain to me and our viewers what the Higgs boson is and why they won this Nobel Prize. Well, obviously, well, I shouldn't say obviously, but the, it, it's a major discovery because it confirms the standard model of particle physics. And it's really sort of the elemental thing that explains why certain particles have mass. Now, disclaimer, I am not a particle physicist, but uh, on a basic level, the Higgs boson is sort of a um, uh, an adaptation or... I, I want to say mutation, that's not quite right, but a development in the Higgs field, and when certain particles pass over it, uh, they either they interact with it in a certain way, and the field actually gives them mass. It's it's sort of hard to explain, and it's hard to understand if you don't really know that. We've been following science. this story for years, and I yeah. still don't. It still hasn't completely gelled in my brain what exactly is happening. Here. Right. Well, uh, the the some of, one of the videos that I saw online sort of explained it how the particle will pass over the field, and then the field reacts to it as it goes by, and it won't react with, field, with particles that have no mass. So you can tell which of these particles have mass and which don't. And that's obviously that's a major a development that will help us better understand why the particles have mass, why they don't, and which ones do. And that can change the way that we uh, do all sorts of experiments. Indeed, not bad at all for 20 minutes of research. It might you have can, been 25. Yeah. You can read more about the Higgs boson on PC Mag, on, on Extreme Tech, where we do some really nice deep scientific dives that actually get really into the nitty gritty there. Nice job. I'm impressed. Thank you. Now we're going to move on to one cool thing. We review thousands of products at PC Mag Labs every year. Every day we pull one thing off the shelf to show it to you. Sometimes we reviewed it, sometimes we just got it into the lab. Today it is the Sony Vio Flip 50. Is that right, Matt? Flip 15. Flip 15. Oh, 15 so inch close. monitor here. That's right. Yeah. A 50 inch monitor would be absurd. So uh, that that here. would be absurd. Yeah. You talk. I will play. Okay. And well, show our users. This this is the this is another laptop from Sony that's uh, coming out very soon. Uh, we're reviewing it now, so we can't tell you much about the performance. But as with a lot of uh, Windows 8 systems, it's got a special little design on the screen that lets you flip it around and either show it to other people. Uh, we were discussing a while back about... Show it to other the, people, like to yeah, you like this? Yeah, I don't. I mean, I can't figure out exactly why most people would want to do that it's if really, there's not a screen on the other side. It's really this yeah, portrait. And obviously, being able to use it as a tablet is the, is the right way to go if you're not going to use it as a regular laptop. But Sony said that they designed it as a PC first and... It's got some good hardware in it. It's got a good 10-point touch screen with full HD resolution. Uh, it's got pen support. Uh, it's, it's, it starts at a, at a pretty decent price in the 800 to $900 range. And it's, uh, it's certainly, it, look, it looks good. Uh, we don't really have the performance numbers on it yet, uh, as I said. But uh, if you want a convertible kind of laptop, it might be a good choice. Uh, but obviously, it's, uh, it's big. Not everyone's going to like it. Big laptops. I actually do. Uh, there's kind of a standing joke around here about me always wanting to take the you biggest like one we have. Well, yeah, I'm a desktop guy too. Yeah. So the bigger it is, the better. And certainly, this is a good screen for for watching movies and, and doing other things, and it works well with Windows 8.1. But so you've got a full full featured desktop replacement laptop, but then you can also flip the screen over and leave it on the table like this, and just work it as a as a tablet on the on a on a flat surface. Yeah. And the thing is, this is what Windows 8 is usually pretty good at. Um, this is the form factor that's missing in a lot of Windows 8 laptops that everybody's like, well, why would I want a touch screen on my laptop? It's going to tip over. Yeah. This solves that problem. Um, and, but the thing is, not a lot of apps are actually built for using like this without a keyboard. Well, that's, that's true, but there are more all the time. And certainly the basic standard Windows 8 apps, there's a really good selection of those, and there has been, and there are more coming out every day. So as uh, developers get more into this and start moving away from the desktop model, which as we've talked about before, Microsoft is really interested in, you'll start seeing more of these, just as it took Apple a while to ramp up iOS. Uh, 
we'll we'll see more. But yeah, there's still kind of a limited selection right now. But there's still a lot you can do with the system in its traditional mode. And if you need a tablet, you've got one of those the, too. The desktop replacement hybrid laptop tablet. That's what we're that's what we're talking about here. Sure, it, <laughs> it's, a, it's a mouthful, but. If you need a lot of if you need a lot of different choices for whatever you do, whether you want to use a tablet or a laptop, or you want to show recipes to people, and you don't care if you can't see the screen while you do, I don't I don't need to look at the screen when I type, but you know most of us do. Most yeah, of us do. even so, I like being able to see it. So All right, so we got this into the into the labs yesterday. We should have a review finished and done in about a week, uh, depending on how quickly we get to it. But um, check that out, the Vio. Flip 15. Flip 15. Vio Flip 15. Check it out on PCMag.com. Now we've actually had, we've got a couple of questions. We're going to have time for one question today from Eddie, who asked us online, what is the problem with the Silk Road founder? The FBI seized his assets. They seized his computers. They say they've seized his Bitcoins. Um, he's got $80 million worth of Bitcoins, but somehow the FBI is unable to capture them, and he wants to know why that is. And um, this is the thing about Bitcoins. Well, although you can capture and, and, and use them as a standard currency and they can operate independently, it really helps to have the passwords in order to get access to them. So it sounds like he's protected his, his Bitcoins behind a password, and they are probably, the FBI is probably asking him very nicely to give them that password right now. But as of right now, they don't have it, and um, it's making for a bit of drama in the Bitcoin community because uh, $80 million worth of Bitcoins is actually 5% of all the Bitcoins in distribution. So that's a healthy amount of money, and, and, and it really is changing the, the whole currency. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's a huge amount, in, like, as you said, in, in terms of Bitcoins. But I think it's fascinating from the standpoint that it's keeping Bitcoin in the news. Certainly, there have been a lot of these other kind of virtual currencies over the years that haven't really gone anywhere, and Bitcoins are still around after, after a couple of years. And it's been a little bit longer than that. It's been in development for a while, but it's uh, kind of amazing that it's still kind of going strong. It, it also hasn't really skyrocketed yet and really taken off to the to the point where you know my mother or other people who don't really follow it as closely as we do are taking advantage of it but it might still get there well, I don't know let's see what happens when the FBI does finally crack that code and get their access to that money because that could change that currency substantially All right that's PC mag live for today we're going to be back on air 12:30 tomorrow 9:30 Pacific please join us then send us your questions via email via Instagram on Facebook all the social media, we're there. And check out PCMag.com for more about these stories and a whole lot more. Thanks for tuning in.